United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then I'd like to turn the time over to Joe, who is our moderator for tonight. He is a uh, uh, he lives in Cedar Hills here, and he is a member of the American Fork City um, Chamber of Commerce. What we'd like to do, we're going to kind of set the ground rules for tonight's uh, meeting. I'll go through what we'd like to do, and then uh, so everybody understands it. We're going to just have each candidate um, go ahead and do an introduction. Tell us your name, anything else you'd like to talk about, about yourself. Uh, each candidate, we'd like to keep it to a, a minute and a half or less, so we can get as many questions uh, that we can in tonight. And then after you're done with the um, introductions, the Youth Council has uh, submitted some questions that we'd like to uh, ask uh, the candidates. So the question will, I'll, I'll ask the question, and then we'll go in order, um, but we won't go in order every time because I don't think it's right that the same person has to go first every time. So we'll mix it up a little bit, um, that's only fair. And then we'd like you to keep your uh, answers to a minute. If you feel like you'd like to do a rebuttal or an additional comment, uh, just raise your hand, let me know. I'll be happy to give you more time. We'd like to keep the rebuttals to 30 seconds, but just to keep it fair, if there's one person that would like to do a rebuttal, then each person that wishes also gets that 30 seconds. So that's how we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'd like to have it if we have time. We really would like to have the audience, if you have questions that you would like to ask, uh, open it up to you. You can uh, walk up to the pulpit and ask your, your question. Uh, each candidate will have an opportunity to have a one minute response to your question. We ask that you keep your questions to 15 seconds. Uh, that, that will allow uh, as many questions as we can tonight. Um, so you can see the differences of opinions and uh, uh, beliefs of each candidate to get a better idea of uh, where they stand on the issues that are important to you. So does everybody understand how we're going to work tonight? Perfect. So I will ask the question and then I will ask uh, a specific person to start and then how we'll proceed from there. So, yes. Yes. So when you get up to about uh, 15 seconds, if you like, raise your hand so they know they have 15 seconds left. And when they're down to five seconds, just raise your hand and start counting down on your fingers. And that will make sure that they'll know uh, that gives me time to wrap up. Okay? So let's start on the far end. If you'd like to give us your name, a uh, brief introduction, uh, a minute and a half of what you have, and uh, we'll go ahead and start. Thank you. So my name is Brittany Lindsay. I am 32 years old and I've been a resident of Cedar Hills for three years now. Um, one of the main reasons we moved to Cedar Hills is we loved the beauty of the city and we loved the type of community vibe that it gave off. We also loved the, the, the escaping of the mountains. We loved um, how every neighbor seemed to care about their neighborhood. Um, and you could tell that everyone took pride in their lots and took pride in their neighborhoods. And, and then when we moved here, we saw that that was true. Everyone really cares about their homes. They care about their neighbors. They care about the park down the street. I see all the time people on Facebook posting, oh, this person left this here. You can tell everyone cares about their neighbors and the people that are around them. And that's one of my favorite reasons. Um, it's one of my favorite reasons why we live here. And we are going to be here for a long-term foreseeable future. And so I am pretty passionate about politics and I am pretty passionate about our country and I love living here in the United States of America. I love my family and I love freedom and I will always stand and do what I can to do what's right. So that's one reason I have chosen to run for city council and do my part as a public servant if needed and do whatever I can to help preserve the freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States. Bob, I've heard about nine million times in my life. So if you ask me what 
about Bob Wood. We've lived in the city for 18, almost 19 years, raised our family here. My lovely wife Linda is over there. I know it's amazing. She doesn't have a very good taste in man. <laughs> um, I love this city. It's a great city and we need to keep it great. And I have to commend our, our, our council and when it comes to our mayor, she may think that I'm going right back on the back. I think that the last two mayors we've had, we hit the lottery. Um, one of the reasons that I'm running for city council uh, is a long story. It started quite some time ago when I ran into some issues with uh, with city codes. Um, and it seemed to me that the city codes didn't apply to everybody. It only applied to people who got caught or who tried to do it the right way. And I just thought that was wrong. And so I, I'm running for city council because I would like to get our city involved. And a couple of months ago, we had a, a council meeting, and there were some very controversial issues that we voted on. I didn't vote, but the council voted on, and there was nobody there except for me and Alex. And we were there because we're the we one primary, and we're part of it anyway. But it's just the apathy for our city just is, uh, is tough, and we need to get more involved. So that's why I'm running.
peaceful, serene, happy lifestyle that we wanted to raise our children in. And I feel like that's what we've gotten. And we've watched Cedar Hills grow. We lived on Oak Road, and we can look out and see the whole valley, and we saw fields disappearing one by one as development came in. So we watched this entire city grow to almost now we're completely almost built out. And I want to make sure, as mayor, that we help preserve that small town feel that we've had from the beginning while still helping to progress in different ways, like bringing fiber to the city or making sure that we zone things properly so that we develop what we have left to develop properly. I want to see um, the commercial zone develop so that we can continue to fund the city and do the things that we need to do in the city. And I have appreciated my time serving as mayor, and I look forward to the next four years. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to make a, a little uh, comment. Um, mayor Anderson is running unopposed this uh, this cycle, and so uh, to make sure the other candidates have uh, ample time to answer the questions. Uh, she has uh, said that she'll go ahead and uh, not participate in all the questions. If there's something that uh, she feels is important, uh, then she'll address that. But that will make sure that we have ample time for the uh, for for the candidates, and then she'll she'll be included in the closing remarks. So thank you, Mayor. So let's go to the first question. The first question is this: Why do you want to be on the city council? Uh, let's go ahead and start with Lindsay, and then we'll just work straight hold uh, straight uh, to the right, uh, just like we just did. Lindsay, go ahead. My name is actually Brittany. I don't know if we refer by last name. So we refer by last name. No, it's okay. A lot of people actually in my neighborhood call me Lindsay, so I take both. But just for anyone here, my name is Brittany. Um. Anyways. One of the reasons that I am running is because I know a lot of people when they have issues and when they see something wrong in their communities, they like to blame the, the national government, the federal government. They say, oh, it's because of Trump. Oh, it's because of Biden. Oh, it's the, you know, the con it's Congress. No, a lot of issues that you have stem from local government. And a lot of issues that you have can be controlled and regulated if you go and you talk to your local government and you have a discussion and both sides are open to listening to each other. I have been in discussions where both sides are open and great things happen. I have been in discussions where you are shut out and both sides are not listening to each other. Um, when one side, when it's a one-sided dialogue, nothing will happen. And I feel like, I feel like it's important to have these discussions and be open-minded. Um, and that is what I will be if I if I am able to be a public servant here in Cedar Hill. Thank you. Just a uh, reference one time or something to me to finish your work and just be done. Good job, though. I didn't hear what you said. I didn't have a response. Would you like to repeat the question? I'm sharp again. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. I'm running for city council for a couple of reasons. One, we need we need a voice that is for all of the people, not just the most vocal. And, and it seems that our society has, has gotten to that point where this side and this side, whichever side you're on, the most vocal is the one that runs things. And and it's made people apathetic about what <coughs> what they can do and what they can accomplish. And we make it as difficult as we can as a, as a government uh, for people to find out what what they can do. If you wanted to get a copy of the, the council agenda, unless you're computer literate, you'd have a difficult time. Um, you have to go to the county and sign up, and it's a difficult thing. So I'm running to try and make things easier for all of us so that the whole city can be involved in what they're doing. So that's why I'm running for city council. I'm ready? Okay. Um, I am running for city council because I love Cedar Hills. I really do. I love it. And you can, my husband can attest to this. We go on a walk almost every night around the neighborhood. And I'm all, every night, I'm like, you know what I'm going to say it right now? And he's like, yes. And then I say, the mountains are so pretty. I'm like, look at those lights. And I just, I love it here. I love all the parks. Um, I love having my kids here. 
Um, and I love helping and being involved in my community. And so to me, um, being on the city council is a really effective way that I can help and be involved and contribute to my community. Um, and so that, that's why I'm running. I'm just excited about Seattle, excited to be here. I, I think that generally the, the current leadership is doing a great job. I'm sure that we won't agree on everything, but, um, but I, I would like to contribute and, and carry on what they're doing and, just, and be an asset and a help Now. So that's why I'm running. 
Am I ready? Yes. Okay. So there are a couple of things. Um, first off, I was a PR director and I did broadcast journalism and I'm still actually a broadcast journalist. Um, so I feel that in both of those roles you work a lot. It's a communication-based job. So a lot of those roles you work with people all the time. And that is actually something that I feel has really strongly prepared me to do this exact thing. I feel like working with people is what we need to do, like Bob said, more in the city. We can do more city surveys. Before we make huge purchases, we can turn it to the city and see what would the residents like. Is this something that the residents align with? If not, we need to reassess what we're doing. So I think that that is something that's really important is knowing also who we represent. We are not just the city council. They are not just the city council. The council represents the people. So again, it is up to the people. Anything that is being decided up here, it should be up to the people. Thank you. Thank you. So this round, we're gonna start with, let's see here. We're gonna go ahead and have Bob will be first this time, then Brittany, then Laura, then Alexandra. That'll be the order. The question is, what ideas do you have to increase revenue or cut expenses if you were elected? What ideas do you have to, to increase revenue or cut expenses if you were elected? I think a lot of the a lot of the things that our city is doing right now are, are good ideas. What they what they what they're doing with the golf course. Uh, for those of you who don't know, they're they're changing the driving range into a six-hole course uh, to make it more uh, more revenue friendly. Um, I think we need to look at the property on the on the east side of Canyon Road uh, that is just wasted and see if there's something we can do with that property because that's hundreds of thousands of dollars just sitting there. Um, and that would, that alone would increase revenue substantially. So we need to look at that. Uh, plus a couple of other things that uh, uh, the, the council has talked about, uh, raising some of the fees, uh, not to the citizens, but if you, the use fees, if you use some of, the, some of the areas. But really number one is that property across the street. Uh, that really needs to be looked at. You said Brittany is next, right? That's correct. All right. So I have a few ideas. Again, so in, when I was a PR director, I had to do a lot of marketing. Um, and so I would suggest doing more marketing, especially for this beautiful building that we're all sitting in right now. There are so many wonderful things that we can do with this facility. We paid for it and we are paying for it. So why not do more to market it and market events here? And we can also do more city events here. We can do more city run events where we are profiting from them as well. So I agree with assessing what is the best option for that property that the city owns. Um, but I also think that, again, it would be important to take it to the people and see if more development is what is wanted in the city. Because develop, if development is going all over Utah, it's crazy. Do we want to keep that green space? What would the people like to do with that? Um, that is what I would recommend. Those are a few things that I would propose to it. Thank you. Um, well, in looking at cutting budgets, it's, a, it's an easy thing to say, but it's a hard thing to do. But I think the city has been really good at looking at things along the way on how we can um, shape things off, consolidate, um, double up on things. Those, in my experience, have been the best ways to save money in budgets, um, looking at ways to um, use what we have. Our city staff has been phenomenal at getting grants. Um, going out for different things that help benefit the city and we don't do anything for it. It's money that we're able to use for projects um, and helping towards things like that. Um, I think um, raising revenue would come, our, we're almost built out, so there's not a ton of opportunity with property um, and business, but continuing to um, market the things like the golf course and the center that we have are also good ways to bring in more revenue, but most 
important is to have a reserve so that when we have an emergency, we are not hit. We can have that reserve to use and keep our budget stable. So as far as cutting um, expenses, I agree with what Laura said that overall I think the city has been very careful with the, the money that they've been um, under stewardship for. Um, they, they, have a, they have a comprehensive maintenance plan on everything that we own and they're doing a great job taking care of it. Um, and so I, I think as far as like cutting out the budget, I, I, I can't think of anything where I would want to cut corners. I think, I think it's important to maintain all of our parks and amenities that we have. Um, as far as revenue, um, the, the main thing that came to my mind is um, when, as we increase the, the perceived value of the, the properties and the homes here in Cedar Hills, um, that's going to increase uh, revenue for our city through tax revenue. Um, and so, and that's something that I am passionate about is helping people realize what an awesome place Cedar Hills is to live. And I think I can really help with the branding of our city. Thank you. For the next uh, question, we're going to start with Alexandra, and then Laura, then Brittany, and then Bob. <coughs> the question is, the, as part of the City Council, collaboration is a vital uh, skill set to have. How will you facilitate collaboration in your meetings if you're elected? Awesome. I like this question um, because my entire job is creating win-win solutions. That's what I do all day long with my clients, with the team that I run, um, is just is trying to come up with um, solutions that not everyone's always going to be happy, but trying to find a solution where everyone has at least some kind of a win. And so um, as we're communicating in the city council and coming up with ideas and plans, and we're all going to have a little bit different opinions, um, my goal would be to, to try to create a solution where as many of us um, get something that we want as possible and of course um, that relates to the people in our city and, and getting and doing the things that are with the people in our city as well so um, that would be my focus is just um, making sure that everyone is heard and feels like they get a win yes good Joe can you read me a question oh sorry I okay uh, part of the city council the collaboration is a, a vital skill set how will you facilitate collaboration if you are elected? Uh, okay, that's right. Collaboration. Again, I refer back to the little article I just wrote on synergy and working together. So the last two meetings that we had, we have had more people attend than any of the other meetings I've been at, and we got some really great feedback. And big opinions and viewpoints have really changed some of our minds on the ways that we were looking at some things. The more people involved, the more voices heard, the more collaborating between different groups and entities, we all have different experiences, we all have different knowledge. If we can work together and share that, I have no doubt that the best possible decisions can be made for the city, for our community, and for what we're doing. And I think that we're doing a really good job of that. Our goal would be um, city council to continue. We want to continue to get our citizens to come to our meetings and to contribute and to give their thoughts and their ideas so that we can continue to do the great things that we're doing. So I agree with the other candidates that it is all, it all comes down to two different opinions being able to collide and work out into one successful solution. And so that only happens again when both sides are open-minded to change. Sometimes change needs to happen in order to achieve something that's more better, that's better, and um, that's a better solution for the city and for the residents. And so I think that that can happen through the city surveys that have been discussed before. I think we can do a better job, for sure, with city surveys. Um, it's a super simple thing that we can put out to understand what people want, how they feel, and I know that they're trying to make agendas more available to people so that people know what's being discussed at the meetings, and I think that's a great idea because people obviously do strongly care about what's being discussed at these meetings. As we've seen, the past couple meetings have been packed. So um, 
I think that that's a great idea to just inform the people and get more involvement because people do care and they want to know how to get involved. Thanks. I've found in my life that if you listen uh, to everybody around you, actually listen intently to what they're saying, uh, you'll find answers to just about any problem uh, that our city can have, but you have to listen to both sides. So how do you do that? How do you get people to respond and talk when, it, when before the issue comes? And, and it comes down to, to making it easy. And, and somebody told me once, what if even an apple a day keeps the doctor away is really true? So if you eat an apple a day, does that make you healthier than you were yesterday? Yes, it does. And that's what we need to look at when we, we need to make it as easy as possible for people to participate in whatever council or whatever issues we've got. Make it as easy as whatever those, whatever way it is, email, calls, talking, whatever it is, we need to make it as easy as possible uh, because most people want to collaborate. They just need to have a voice. Okay, so uh, Alexander, you have 30 seconds to make a comment. I just wanted to note that the city um, is planning another survey soon, actually. Just, um, I just thought that was important to note that they, they have one going out. Um, and it's going to cover the library, dog park, um, a cemetery, um, all kinds of things that have been discussed. And so if anybody has something that they want to be included on that survey, definitely reach out to the people who are running the city. Would anybody else like to have a 30 second, 30 second response? I can give a time, a minute and a half to the mayor. Oh, a minute and a half. So I wanted to talk about collaboration too, and I wanted to specifically um, talk about the council, the current council that we have right now. And one of the reasons why I think our council um, has been running so successfully is because we have such a group of respectful people on our council who, even though we don't always agree on everything, we can agree, disagree respectfully. And I think that we work really hard. Um, to come to consensus together through the process. And I'll also add that outside of the city council chambers, we are, I think we are friends. And I think it's because we built this level of respect for each other. And uh, I think that's important because I think that brings something to the city that's important. I see other cities who have councils that are always um, combative and they're conflicting with each other. And a mayor who fights against city council members and a lot does not happen and doesn't get done in a city where you have a lot of conflict. So I wanted to just shout out to the current council and say how important it is to have that respectful dialogue that I think that we have and I appreciate that. And thank you for mentioning about the survey. There is a survey coming out, it should be out in about a month. And some of the, one of the process of the survey, how much time do I have, is that the same questions get answered so that we can have a baseline for what people are thinking. And then new questions are added onto the survey on issues that the residents have brought to the council and said, we are concerned about this. So if you are concerned about something, bring it to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take 30 seconds? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. If I can. You can, yeah. You get to. Um, I, th I just want to add to what, what they were saying. First off, I would, I would hope nobody thinks that that anything I've said uh, is, is a negative against our city council. They are awesome, and it's a tough job. I've watched um, over the last, I don't know, six or seven years. They even applied to be on the city council and failed miserably. Uh, and they, uh, they picked somebody who was substantially more qualified than me. But anyway, I just wanted to say that, that they really work together well, and I like that. But would anybody else like to take 30 seconds to respond? Okay, thank you, Mayor. The next question, we're going to go, the order of this question will be uh, Laura, Alexandra, Bob, and then uh, Brittany. The question is, what is one thing you think you could uh, do to make Cedar Hills a better place to live?
we all know that we're working in the same direction and for the same goal, um, I feel like I can help contribute towards that and um, continue to, to serve and be level-headed and learn um, and help make the best decisions that I feel like would be best for the majority of the citizens in the city. Well, I have a lot of ideas. I, I love a lot of what the current city council is already doing. So it's hard for me to narrow it down to just one thing that, that I think I could do. Um, but something that has been on my mind a lot lately is the drought and maintaining our water reserves and figuring out a way that um, preserves the beauty that we enjoy here while also protecting um, our valuable water. And so that's something that I will be an advocate for as a member of the city council is um, helping to find solutions that are wins for the community um, for now and for the long run. And so I think um, if I had to sum it up, that would be my answer. But since I have 23 more seconds, um, another thing that I think I could help with um, is branding our city. That's, that's what I've um, excelled at with our real estate team. And so I would just love to put Cedar Hills on the map, not because I want a billion people to live here, but because I want our property values to keep going up um, and I want to know how awesome it is to live here. I think one thing that we can that we can do to make our city better uh, right away. A couple of years ago, uh, they started uh, fixing our trails. They cut some sections in them and fixed a couple of them. And then they stopped. And I don't know why. I haven't really looked into it, but I think that uh, redoing a lot of the pavement on our trails would would be nice. I love our trails. I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and it's so fun to walk through there. It's like you're up in the mountains. But I think that that one thing would, would make the city even nicer. Um, so if you haven't walked on our trails, you need to go walk on them because they're amazing. Um, and that's about the, the one thing I'd work on to really make things nicer. You know, can I bank sometime? No? <laughs> okay. okay, so I have a few ideas on how I could contribute to um, bettering our city. So I've actually brought this up at city council meetings before, but a lot of our parks aren't usable for a lot of the summer because they don't have the flags over them. And as a young mom, that's important because your kids can't touch a lot of the equipment when it is 100 degrees. You can't. It just doesn't work. So um, I would come from the perspective, I guess, of a young mother who is constantly out and about with my kids all over the, the city. Um, using our facilities, we're in dance classes, my kids go to school here, so I am linked in a lot of the um, places where we would look to assess how it's doing. Um, also, I probably do have a different opinion than a lot of people here on the council and a lot of people um, that might be in positions of higher power, and I would always stand to do what is right for the people, despite whether it is the political move of correctness or not, I will always try to do what's right. Thank you. I think it's important to let you know that there are two seats that are available. So when you're going to uh, choose who your candidates, remember that there's you, you get two, two people that you'll be voting for. Um, also, uh, we'd like to wrap this up about 8 o'clock, but I'm sure the candidates will be happy to stay after if you'd like to speak with them individually, get to know them better. Uh, so that's also an opportunity. Well, if we'd like to open it up, if you would like to ask a question uh, to the candidates, uh, we'll do that. This time we'll start with uh, Brittany, then Bob, then Alexandra, and then Laura. So if you have a question, we ask you go to the pulpit. It will take more than 15 seconds. That will allow them to have more time. Thank you. Fiber. City is looking into getting fiber uh, 
or a subscription-based model. <coughs> what are your thoughts on uh, on getting fiber to Cedar Hills, and how high of a priority is that for you? I'm starting this off, right? Yes. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. We already pay uh, quite a large fee for the internet that we use, and it's shoddy a lot of times. Um, so when I heard you guys mention fiber before I had a meeting, it was an instant yes for me um, and my husband. We feel the same way. Uh, again, if it's a really expensive move, I would take it to the people of the city to see how they feel about it, which you guys are probably going to do in the city survey. Um, but personally, there's, yeah, that's like an absolute yes for me. But I would see how the people feel about it. That's what I would do. Thank you. I, I'm with Brittany, and I think that most of the city is. It's, it's if you if you don't have fiber, if you've had it before, and then you don't have it, it's like it's like driving around a pinto. Uh, it's tough, and and you can't watch Netflix upstairs and downstairs and in the and in the office. So so fiber is is the future, and if we don't do something about it, we'll get left behind. It's like we're living in the past um, I, and, and I like what the city has done they, they put together a committee that's going to give them some <coughs> suggestions um, about what they should do and I we need to really look at what other cities have done I'm sure we're going to but uh, we we need to look at it in a subscription basis I believe but fiber is an absolute necessity in our city I think we're all going to agree on this one. I'm so excited about the idea of having fiber. I think it, it's, um, I don't think it's a luxury. I think it's becoming, quickly becoming a necessity. Um, and I think it will be great for our property values. Um, I also wanted to touch briefly on some of the different proposals on how it would play out. So um, like Brian briefly mentioned, um, there's a debate between whether we would do the utility model, meaning it's a basic utility that everyone pays for, and then you can upgrade, or a subscription model where only the people that are using it would um, pay for it. And um, they, they anticipate that it's going to be about at least 40% of people, I believe, if I remember that correctly, that will, that will want to do it. Um, and other cities are leaning towards subscription model, and that's what I would also advocate for. Um, and then as far as um, there's two options, one where the utility company owns it and one where the city owns it, and I think there's a lot to think about there that I don't have time to say anything else about. <laughs> that was awesome. That was a good recap. This is something we just talked about last night, and it is in the works, and I think it is to the point where it's really more so imperative that we have it. Um, we have more people than ever working from home. Their livelihoods, their jobs are based on having this access. Um, I've watched it. My, my passion versus children and education. And man, if we haven't relied on that for the last year and a half since COVID, I don't know what we would have done for you guys that have had to go to home, you know, being at home and being online. Um, and so we do need to make the best decision, which is still in the process. We have the committee that's been working on it. Thank heavens, we haven't had to vet it out ourselves as a city council. There's been a committee. They are presenting this information to us next month. Come and listen to it and give us your input on what you think would be best for our city, but it is, you're right, we all agree, we all want it, we all need it. Um, how to make it happen is still up for discussion and what we're working on, so. So I wanna chime in a little bit on that. Um, not long ago, <coughs> Utopia, who is one of the two companies that we narrowed it down to between Utopia and Strata, we're gonna choose between the fiber companies that will provide the fiber. Utopia conducted a survey throughout the city to find out what the interest of fiber was with our residents and what their current satisfaction with their current um, internet provider was, which as wouldn't surprise you, is extremely low, and then their interest in fiber. And it was such that they thought that fiber would be successful in our city. Similar to numbers of Linden, and I think Linden's take rate is 65% or something, of the people in their city who um, have subscribed to fiber. And my preference, you want to know is also the subscription model. I don't think everybody should have to pay for fiber, whether they, if they don't use it, they shouldn't have to pay for it. So that would be my preference if it goes in. Fiber is coming, it's just going to be who's going to provide it and how are we going to pay for it. So those are the two questions we're looking at. Thank you. Well, go Thank ahead. You. If you 
go to the, the, to the city website, cedarhills.org, and download the, the packet from the, the city council meeting last night. There's about 15 pages of, of information about fiber on there. It's worth it. If you can't get it, let me know. I'll print it and, and bring it to you, but it's worth it. So cedarhills.org and download last night's packet to get the information. Would any other candidate like to take 30 seconds? Okay, so this question, let's start with um, Alexandra, then Laura, then Brittany, then Bob, that's the order we'll take. If, any of you would, if anybody in the audience would like to ask a question, uh, announce back. golf course and the budget and everything, everything about the golf course. Um, while I was not here for that, I don't know that I would have gone ahead and approved the million dollar upgrade. I personally, of course, never, personally I don't use the golf course, but this is not a personal decision. This is a decision that should be citywide. And when we have a decision that is going to cost the city and the residents a lot of money, I think it should be taken to the people. Since the people already pay around $600 a year, from what I understand, on the golf course. Thank you. I've been in the city since 2002 when the golf course comes up every election. And, and in 2015, they had a committee, a, a citizens committee, Put together that came up with some wonderful ideas and the golf course and i may be a little mistaken on this but it is almost revenue neutral now and the debt is being paid down and the money that they're spending for the six hole par three course is is 
extra revenue uh, that has come in because of how well we've done uh, the last couple of years. Um, you know, we got stuck with the golf course, however you want to say it, whatever it is. I, all of my friends think it's one of the most beautiful golf courses in the city. Um, so it's good, and I think what we've done in the last five or six years has made it worthwhile for the city. So I think it's a good investment to continue uh, the way we're going. golf course it's coming out of our property tax um, from what I've heard until about the year 2035 then we are still paying that's using our money until the year 2035 so it's not like this money is coming out we already have this money we're still paying until 2035 and this money could have been perhaps allocated to a different project so it's not like this money was just had to be dedicated to that but again if that, that is what the people would have wanted, then that's absolutely where it should have gone. If that's where the people wanted it to go. Thank you. Can I go ahead. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Uh, just real quick, that, that the golf course generates income, uh, a lot of income. So a lot of that income goes towards paying that. So it isn't money uh, that comes out of our tax base, our property taxes. This golf course, I don't know how many rounds it is a year, but it's in the thousands. And so a lot of the money that services that debt comes from the golf course. And that's why I said that it's almost at the point that it's revenue neutral, so it's not costing the city money. Thank you. Uh, anybody else want to have a 30-second comment? Okay. One more comment. Um, I had a friend who was on the council before, and we were looking over the revenue reports. And it seems that a few things, such as maintenance and the water rights and everything like that, perhaps aren't being included in the reports as they should be. So I think that maybe that should be reassessed as well, that all of the expenditures and all of the parts of the golf course need to be included in the um, reports if we're saying that it is now going to be an asset to the community instead of a tax burden. Thanks. Yeah, anybody else? I just really quickly, I just want to say, um, the impetus for this decision to make the uh, driving range into a six hole or a six, yeah, six hole executive course was originally based on safety. So that was the number one concern. How do we keep these balls from going into the street, going onto the trail, going into the park? And this was the best solution, and the, in my opinion, the best use of the money that we had set aside to raise those nets. So, number one, that was what was driving the decision how can we fix this problem? And we feel like we've settled on the best solution to fix the problem. Just wanted to say I've I've been attending the city council meetings um, and I have watched this play out and I, 
I've seen the careful consideration that has gone into this decision with the golf course. Um, and I, I do agree that it is a, a really, really well thought out, um, good solution, um, all things considered. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, we're, all, we're just about out of time. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to give you one minute to do your 30 second elevator pitch. So this is your opportunity to uh, let the uh, people in the audience know why they should vote for you. Uh, so you've got one minute. And we'd like to start with Bob, then Brittany, then Laura, then Alexandra. That's the order we'd like to go ahead. Go ahead. I'd like to, 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 to real quick tell you about the, the things that I would do. One, I'd be a voice for all of the people, not just for the most vulnerable. Uh, two, I promise never to vote on an issue uh, that is controversial without input from the public. Just think that we should table it if we don't get input on on uh, on issues. Our citizens will always come first with me, always. And there'll be no special interest ties. I don't accept donations. I don't accept donations from the outside of our city. Uh, I'll set up a special email if I need to that you'll be able to get a hold of me. Uh, you'll have my phone number. You can call me anytime. Um, I've got the ability to make tough decisions without any personal agenda, and if our city codes apply, they apply to all of us, not just the ones who get caught. Um, so I promise to listen to everybody around us when I make decisions. Thank you. So, so if elected to city council, I would make sure that not only are the people heard, but that we put measures in place so that the people can make a difference. It's not just the council making a difference, it would be the people making a difference. And I think that that can be done in several different ways. I also would make sure that, again, like what Bob said, it's not about the popular opinion, and it's not even about looking good, because I feel like in our culture here, a lot of what we do is about looking good and fitting into a specific role. That is not why God made you. God made you to be strong, and he made you to represent what's right. And I would always, again, try to stand for what is right. And, and that stretches into my personal opinion, but it also stretches into doing what is best for the public. Um, what is right for the public, what is right for the people, that is what I would always look at. So, thank you. All right, I just want to first say thank you for coming tonight. And thank you, American Pork Chamber of Commerce, for sponsoring this. And thank you to our youth city council for, for hosting and taking a part in this. You guys have all done a great job. Um, I would just ask that you get involved and that you talk to two friends, talk to neighbors on each side. Take our signs. Um, if you feel like we represent you or we can continue, if I can continue to serve um, and be like-minded and continue to do what's best for our city and for our community, take our signs our flyers help us to get the word out um, and, and remember to vote I promise to continue to uh, work hard and to be honest and have integrity and to be wise and level-headed about the things that we discuss and to listen and to um, try to make the best decision possible for the city with all of our codes and ordinances so thanks for your support Okay, so on my flyer, um, we, I was trying to come up with like a, you're supposed to have like a campaign tagline, I guess. This is my first time in public service. Um, and so I thought about what, what I felt represented me. And what I came up with was um, just three words, and it's um, integrity, kindness, and hard work. And I feel like that's what I built my um, personal life around, that's what I built my business around. Um, and so that's my pledge to you that I will I will work hard for you. I will do a good job, but I will do it with integrity, and I will represent the people in the city with integrity, and I will um, make decisions with kindness and with a consideration for everybody involved. Um, so I appreciate your support, and um, like Laura said, feel free to take my sign. I have some flyers there, and um, vote for me if you think I do a good job. Thanks. 
serving in a public office in the city is not, you don't do it for the money, that's for sure. Um, and the only reason you would do it is if you care enough about your city to spend most of your life doing it. I, even though being a mayor is part, a part-time job, I spend a lot of time every week doing it. And it, it's because I love the city of Cedar Hills. I love Cedar Hills. I love the residents. I, um, when I go out of town and come back, I just feel this, just a peace when I come here. It's a peaceful place to live. It's a great place. I love our neighbors and neighborhood. And I love what Cedar Hills has become. I remember being worried a long time ago about what Cedar Hills was going to become. And I love what it's become, and I would love to have the chance to help keep it on that good track. And I know there's nobody else running against me, but when you see my name on the little box, still feel free to check it. I just want to see how many votes I get, just out of curiosity. But I'm, I'm proud to serve the city of Cedar Hills, and I'm grateful that you came tonight, and I want to thank you for being here. Yes, thanks for coming. Uh, we'd like to turn the time back over to the uh, city, uh, youth city Council. Charles is the mayor of the Youth City Council, Mayor Price. Yes, I, I definitely don't do it for the money. Um, <laughs> I also don't get paid. So, um, thank you for all those who are in attendance. Thank you so much to all of our candidates for all of your opinions and insights. Uh, we look forward to see how the selection of girls and how you guys can benefit us as a, as a city and as a community. Um, just a quick reminder for everyone to encourage everyone to uh, talk to these candidates and to be able to get to know them a little further to, because uh, as we've, I think it's a popular thing, we do want community involvement. So make sure people are caring about this election and that are, we're spreading word and that people are doing research and discovering their own opinion and how they want these candidates to represent them. Because from what I've seen, we have some phenomenal candidates. So excited to see what you guys are doing for the city. Uh, with that, I do believe the candidates will be able to be here for a little longer to take any personal questions. So please feel free to take advantage of that. Um, but with that, for all of those who are not staying with us, thank you so much for coming and I hope you guys have a great day.